omelette, eggs and fries. You can even have them jazzy with some chili. And snazzy. Hello everybody, hello children. Welcome to this online field trip. I'm Sam and this is our guide for today. This is JP. Hello. <laughs> now today we're coming to you live from a packing centre which is in Whitney in Oxford. We're here to learn all about a very tasty and very versatile type of food. Eggs, of course. Uh, JP, he runs uh, a chicken farm uh, where many of these eggs were laid. That sounds like a really exciting job, JP. It's fantastic. I love it. Absolutely love it. And um, yeah, all, most of the eggs I produce come into this packing centre. So my farm's in Hertfordshire. I've got 14,000 chickens that lay about 13,000 eggs a day. Um, so it keeps us really, really busy down there. Yeah, and we lay these fantastic eggs you can see in front of us. Wow, that's a lot of chickens and a lot of eggs. It's a lot of work. Yeah, I think you're the perfect person to teach us today. So what are we going to learn while we're here? Well, today we're going to look at the whole process. So we're going to talk about chickens, we're going to talk about eggs, we're going to talk about what we use these eggs for, lots of different sorts of eggs. And then we're also going to have a wander, walk around here and look at the, the process in the packing station and just see how the eggs get taken from the farm through all this really fantastic stuff um, and end up in the egg boxes and then ultimately into the shops. Really exciting, very exciting. Let's find out who we have uh, taking part today then and joining us. Uh, let's go to our first school who is at Surrey Square Primary School in London. Hello children. <laughs> Fantastic, great to have you all taking part. Let's go over to Downsbrook Middle School now in Worthing where Mrs Sharp's class is taking part. Great stuff. Let's go to St Anne's Denton Primary School now, who are in Manchester, where Miss Flint's class is taking part. Hello, St Anne's. <laughs> Hi, children. And let's go up to Manor Green Primary School now in Manchester, where Mrs Metcalfe's class is taking part. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Fantastic. And finally, we have to say a big hello to Russell Scott School as well, who are also taking part and watching and learning with us today. Uh, it really is going to be an exciting field trip. Definitely. I think we should start by finding out a little bit more about eggs, uh, JP as well. Is it mainly chicken's eggs that we eat in the UK? Yeah, we do. So in the UK, 99.5% of all the eggs that we eat are chicken eggs. And we've got a huge array of them here. So they come in all shapes and sizes. So we've got large, medium, small. We also got some white ones here. Fantastic. They look um, great. They really do look great. Yeah, really, really lovely. They predominantly come from white chickens. So a lot of our eggs, white eggs come from white birds. Brown eggs lay the brown, um, brown eggs come from the brown birds. Yeah, so yeah, lots of different chickens and, in the UK. And eggs are really important to us in the UK, aren't they? We do love them. We do. I mean, they, they're fantastic food. Um, and you can use them so many different ways. Um, you, we, we all know that you have your fried egg in the morning and you know, your, your omelettes and all that sort of stuff. Um, so you can eat them, but they also get used in lots of different foodstuffs as well. Yeah, so without, without eggs, we wouldn't be able to eat a lot of our really tasty things like cakes and pies and all exactly, that sort of stuff, yeah. would we? All that lovely home baking. <laughs> now, children, you may have already seen that we have some great resources um, and uh, facts about eggs on the website. I know some of you have already been learning all about eggs by using them as well. And I do know that we have some experts over in That's Surrey a Square joke, Primary Sam. School. Cracking I'm sorry joke. about that joke. <laughs> uh, so let's go over to Mrs. Anderson's class now to find out what you've learnt. I know what the yellow bit of the egg is called a yolk. That's a great fact. So the yellow bit inside an egg, JP, is called the yolk. It is indeed, and we can crack one out in a minute and have a look at that, can't we? Fantastic. Yes, let's do that. Um, let's have another fact. Eggs can be in different colours. That's really good. So eggs come in different colours, JP. They do, yeah. Lots of different colours. We've got brown ones here, but we can see our white birds that lay white eggs. But we can get speckled the eggs. And it all depends on the breed of chicken. So lots of different breeds of chickens. And they all lay very, very different eggs. Do they taste different as well, JP? Um, most of them do. It depends, again, where they stay. So if they live and they walk outside a lot and eating things outside, then that can change the flavour of the egg. But yeah, lots of different sorts of eggs do taste different. Great. That's a great fact. Let's get another one. Eggs are different sizes. That's a really good one. So eggs are different sizes? Yes, they are. And eggs come in all different shapes and sizes. And what we find is when chickens are very young, they'll lay small little tiny eggs. 
and as the chickens get older, they lay bigger and bigger and bigger eggs. So when you go to the supermarket and you buy little eggs, then you get them from really little, like, so young chickens, and then the bigger the egg, normally they come from the older girls we've got on the farm. That's great. Okay, lovely. Let's get one more fact from Surrey Square Primary. You can boil your eggs, you can cook, you can, you can fry eggs and you can poach eggs, and I like scrambled eggs and waffles. Fantastic, that's so good. So you can cook eggs in lots of different ways, but their favourite is scrambled eggs, or that little boy's favourite oh, is scrambled uh, eggs. Oh, yeah, absolutely agree. Scrambled eggs are fantastic. Mine's poached. There's so many different ways, isn't there? You so never get, you, ways, you never yeah. get bored. Well, no. we had a great fact there, JP, about um, the yolk of an egg. So can we take a look inside an egg and see the different, different parts? OK, so if I crack this one open, I'm going to swap that for that one, because I think that's a better egg. But if I crack the egg open... Wow, aren't we wow. lucky? It looks like this one's a double yoker. <laughs> I don't um, think I've ever seen a double yoker in, in all my life. So we can see here, so we've got the yolk. So the yolk is a nice, rich, dark colour. And that's where most of the nutrients are. And that's what gives the yolk that lovely colour. And then outside, what we call, we call this, the technical name is albumen, but everyone knows it as white. And you can tell how fresh an egg is by how high the white is. So oh. if you crack an egg out and it spreads across your pan, you know that's a lot older. The higher the album is, the fresher the egg. Okay, so you kind of need to sort of get yeah, down to get down the plate low, size you can measure it. We actually, we can tell in, it on the farm how fresh they are by measuring the height of that. So wow. we can work it out. That's fascinating. I didn't know that at all. Thank you so much, JP. I think now we should learn a little bit more about the lovely ladies that actually lay the eggs. Now, unfortunately, children, we couldn't bring a chicken inside here, but we do have a lovely, uh, very realistic model to introduce you to. Who's this, JP? I, I haven't named her yet. <laughs> Unfortunately, we couldn't bring a, a chicken into the factory uh, because obviously we need to keep it nice and clean and everything like that. Yep. So we've got the next best thing, which is this nice, nice fluffy, fluffy chicken here. Now, and she looks quite happy. Is she quite healthy? Yes, healthy is the key, I think. And it's the same as, you know, any, any animals you look after at home when you have a pet you have to look after them to the best of your ability so on the farm we're always making sure that the chickens are really always healthy and always happy do you look at their feathers is that a good indication yeah feathers are really important so nice glossy feathers a lot of our chickens go outside at home uh, and we plant lots of trees and they lust, like to dust bathe uh, a lot and they do that to keep all their feathers lovely and clean so in the summer especially when it's nice and dry outside you see all loads of these chickens outside <laughs> dust bathing looks fantastic i love it we spend most of our life having baths and washing off mud and dust and then chickens decide to roll in it and, exactly. and it keeps them clean. Yeah, it does. That's great. And you mentioned that your chickens kind of lays under the trees and have a wander around, but they're not always kept outside the whole time, are they? No, chickens, chickens are kept in all sorts of, sort of different sort of types of, of environment. Um, uh, and yes, yeah, some spend more time outside, some less. But, you know, and loads of people have chickens in their back gardens. You know, they're, they're everywhere. Everywhere you go, you find lots and lots of chickens now. Oh, it's fantastic. Imagine having a chicken in your back garden. You could have a little wander down in the morning and, and grab an egg and you could have a, a boiled egg or a poached egg within minutes that'd yeah, be great yeah. i mean the other things we look at obviously the birds comb and wattle so we're looking at the color of these yeah and um, we want them to be nice and red and that tells you you know whether the bird's healthy and, what are and these bits for that what's it's a comb and wattle what yeah are so they the for? comb's a bit on the top and the wattle's the bit underneath yeah now, chickens don't sweat like us so that it's much, much harder for them to, to, to sort of maintain their body temperature. So they actually pump blood into those and that's what keeps them so they can cool themselves up and down by using their combs and waffles. That's so clever, yeah, so yeah. clever. Um, and do, do um, chickens have different personalities or are they all sort of the same? Definitely, definitely. <laughs> um, the lads on the farm, they all have their favourite chickens, we all have our favourite chickens. Obviously we don't name them all because we have 14,000, <laughs> um, but definitely some birds that are real characters and that's the fantastic thing about looking after chickens is they're all such brilliant characters, really you know, inquisitive and fantastic animals to look after. Great, and what do they eat and drink? Okay, we so talk about what we eat and drink, we love yeah. eggs, but what do they have? Um, we feed our birds a layers mash um, and this is a sort of some of it here. And basically this is wheat and lots of other ingredients, ma mainly wheat and sort of a cereal based diet. Um, and in there is all the nutrients a bird needs and a chicken needs. Obviously out on the farm, the birds have got to look after themselves. So they mm -hmm. need to eat lots of good energy because um, they've got to produce an egg, they've got to maintain their feathers, they've got to keep themselves warm. And this lovely food will help them to do that. And a chicken will eat about 125 grams of that a day. So on our farm, we get through 14 tonnes of chicken food every week. <laughs> 
Well, that's a full-time job feeding the chickens, then, it isn't is. it? It, it really is. It's is. a lot of food. It definitely is, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. I'm absolutely fascinated, and I'm sure the children are fascinated by everything we're learning. I think we may have some questions for you now, JP, though, because we have learned so much. Let's go over to uh, Downsbrook Middle School now and see if we have any questions. When the bird lays the egg, does it have an effect on its behaviour? That's a really great question. So when a bird lays an egg, JP, does it have an effect on its behaviour at all? Um, yes, it does. I mean, chickens, we, we have lovely nest boxes in, our, in all of our chicken houses, um, which are nice and dark and quiet areas. And chickens love to go to those areas to lay their eggs. Um, and you can hear them, they get in there and they settle down. It's like a little, little quiet area for them. And they lay their eggs um, and they normally take about half an hour you know, to just be in there, get settled, lay the egg and then come out. So it's about half an hour and each individual bird will spend about that time of day and, and lay the eggs into that lovely little clean nest box. Great. That's a really great question. Let's get another one from Downsbrook Middle School. Why are the same types of bird eggs different shapes and sizes? That's a really great question. So why does the same bird um, lay different shapes and size eggs? OK, so again, you know, different birds, the, the bird will lay, as when it's younger, a small egg, and as the bird gets older, the eggs get bigger. Um, so that's okay. normally the main difference. But different sorts of chickens, so again, you know, ducks and geese and quail and all that sort of birds lay different sorts of eggs, and different breeds of chicken mean that the eggs are different. Great, fantastic. And as I said, we have uh, Russell Scott uh, watching and learning with us uh, too as well. And I have a question Brilliant. from from, uh, from Miss Higgins' class. So how many chickens do you have on your farm and how many eggs do they lay? OK, so I've got 14,000 chickens on the farm um, and they will lay about 13,500 eggs a day. Wow, that's a yeah. lot. It's a lot of work. And we've got about four guys that spend the day and they go around and collect. They look after the chickens, but they go around and collect the eggs. So, yeah, it's a lot of work. And we, then we take, once we've collected them, we put them into these quad bikes and then we drive them down and put them into our central egg store on the farm, ready to be picked up by the lorries. Brilliant. That sounds like a lot of fun. It's good fun. It's good fun. <laughs> Especially when it's snowing and, you know, it's good fun on the quad bikes. Very Great. Good fun, yeah. Talking of uh, lots of fun, we're going to get inside and take a look at what happens to the eggs next, aren't we, very, very Definitely, shortly. Yes. Uh, first up, though, here's our first video, a really short video, all about eggs. Enjoy. What is an egg? It's not just birds that lay eggs. Reptiles, fish and amphibians can too. For these creatures, laying eggs is the way they reproduce. An egg is always laid by the female. Some eggs will be fertilised by a male and will hatch into a baby animal or bird. But lots of eggs aren't fertilised, which means a baby animal won't develop. These eggs are the ones we can cook and eat for breakfast or dinner. Most of the eggs that we eat come from chickens. But we also eat other kinds of eggs too, such as quail, duck, goose and ostrich eggs. In the UK, the eggs we eat come in different sizes. Small, medium and large. The size of the egg is different depending on how old the hen is. The younger the hen, the smaller the eggs. Eggs also come in lots of different colours, from brown to white to blue to copper. The egg and the hen are most often the same colour. So the eggs at this farm are all different shades of brown, because they've been laid by brown chickens. Eggs are formed inside the hen over a period of about 25 hours. First, the yolk develops. It sits in the centre of the egg and contains vitamins, minerals and protein. Next, the egg white is formed. The egg white sits around the yolk. It's made mostly from water, but also contains proteins. The last part of the egg to form is the outside, or shell, which takes about 21 hours. The eggshell is made from a material called calcium carbonate and its job is to protect the yolk inside. On this farm, the hens lay an egg every 27 hours, which means that one hen can lay a whopping 300 eggs every year. 
Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that video. Now, as you can see, we've moved to a different part of the packing centre now. There's so much going on in here. There's machines, there's people um, packing eggs. It's a really, really great place to be. And JP, what is happening? OK, so we were in the, in the store. So all the eggs come in from the farm. They were in the room that we were just in. So now we're into the actual packing. This is the heart of the packing centre. So what happens here is the eggs come from the store, they come along through this big machine behind us, which we're gonna have a closer look at, and basically that will look at every single egg and check whether it's okay, measure the size of it, and then work out where it needs to go and make sure it ends up in the correct box. And then those boxes go into, the, into our store at the end and then eventually end up in all the supermarkets. Great stuff. Can we take a look around? Yeah, Is that fantastic. Okay? Let's go and have Brilliant. a look. Brilliant, come on. Quite exciting this, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. I know, it's <laughs> an awful lot going on here. And lots so of people good. busy themselves, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna look at eggs very differently now that so much goes into oh, it. <laughs> amazing, yeah. Okay, so what's happening here? It looks like they are coming from the room we were just in. Okay, so we've got a really, really clever robot in there who is taking the eggs off of the pallet and they've put them onto this conveyor belt. And really all that's happening here is we're transporting the eggs and you can see all these lovely, lovely eggs. Each one of those stacks has 180 eggs on there. Wow. And they're going along and they'll go to the front of the machine where they're gonna be ready to be lifted up and put into the machine ready to be looked at. Should we take a look? Let's go and have a look. Brilliant. Okay, so this so, place is massive, isn't it? Yeah, it's really it's, big. It's really busy. And there's not that many people, you know, considering the amount of eggs that we get through. Um, you can just see this machine, there's some egg trays coming back here. There's lots going on all over the place. This looks quite exciting here, JP. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So what we're seeing here is this machine is basically lifting the trays of eggs and then putting it onto another conveyor belt. Wow, and they're doing it so gently as well. Like I can't see any of the eggs getting cracked or smashed at all. No, well obviously, you know, when you open your egg box, you want your egg to be really good, fresh and really good condition. So we need to be really careful with them. And this machine can actually pack 180,000 eggs in an hour. Wow. So in a whole day, we can get through a one and a half million eggs here. That is a lot of eggs. It is a lot of eggs. That's amazing. Yeah. What happens to them once they've been put onto the conveyor belt? So I can see them going off that, that way. Okay, so they travel along and then there's another machine with suckers on like this and it will lift the eggs up and suck them and put them onto the rollers. And again, it's a really good way of moving eggs and really delicate. And you can see that going on in the, in the background there. Wow, that's amazing. It and is. I can see there's um, a bit of a flashing light going. It looks oh, on over here. It looks like a bit of a disco. Yeah. If you look really carefully, there's like purple and red lights that's flashing on all the eggs. Yeah, so this is UV. So UV light, and what that does is flashes on the egg, and that, can, that allows the machine to un understand whether the eggs are dirty or contaminated. So it, it makes a note of all the eggs, and then later on it will take those out. That's great. I can see some of them are coming out of here as well. Yes, um, the eggs fall good. out of the chute. So there, any, any liquid egg or anything with a crack in it or leaking comes out and falls out the chute there. Great, fantastic. And so they're all on a very little special conveyor belt now. They're uh, all nice and straight. What happens now? Okay, so the, so the machine's laid all the eggs in the right direction. So they're all pointing in the same direction. Um, and then it goes through this very, very, very clever machine here. So this is our crack detector. So this machine will work out whether the eggs are cracked and what it does is it taps every egg 16 times every second. And then it listens, and if the shell makes a dull sound, it knows it's cracked. If it rings, like a tuning fork or a triangle that you play at school, then you know that it's a good egg, and that's how the machine knows. So clever. Brilliant. So, what Absolutely. would we do without all these machines? I know, I know. <laughs> it would take a lot longer. So we're going to dip underneath here okay. now. Okay. So we're near the final process, are we now, the final part? Yeah, we're getting towards the end. So now, so what we've seen is the machine, with the eggs coming in, we've seen the machine picking them up and loading them. The machine's looked at every single egg, made sure that it's not cracked, that it's clean and it's ideal. It then comes through and we print a little label onto the egg that you can see when you buy an egg. And then this is the best bit. It knows how heavy it is, what sort of egg it is, and then it decides in which lane it's gonna put the egg. So along this lane, there's all different size eggs, different boxes that go into different shops. So yeah, really, really clever That's bit now. So, so clever. I'm guessing if we get up high, we can see Definitely. lots of what's going on. If we on, go up the, we? up the ladder, you'll get a really good view right the way across the packing center and you can see what's going on. 
Okay, so even though there's lots of machines doing lots of work, there's still quite a few people that have to run the machines and do stuff oh, by hand yeah. too. Yeah, make sure all the eggs come in and go in the proper places. So we've got people here who are loading by hand into boxes, but we've also got some very clever machines behind us that are the robots that pack them and put them onto pallets. Fantastic. JP, thank you so much for showing us around. How no exciting problem. was that? I don't think I'll ever experience anything like that again. Oh, no, it's, it's I think we clever. may have some questions for you now. Oh, yes. yeah, you've, yeah. you've shown us so much. So let's go over to St Anne's Denton Primary School um, and see if you have any questions for JP. How many eggs does each head lay in a day? That's fantastic. So how many um, eggs does a hen lay each day, JP? That's a really okay. good question. So a hen will lay an egg, one egg every, every 27 hours. So they, what they normally do is they'll lay a clutch, so we call it a clutch, but they can lay an egg for 20 days and then have a day off. Oh. So uh, yeah, so it, it works like that. So I'd normally get, 95% um, uh, of my birds are laying an egg every day and every chicken will lay about 325 eggs for me in its lifetime. That's a lot of eggs. It's an awful lot of eggs. Yeah. They're very clever eggs. things. Great question. Let's get another question from St Anne's Denton Primary. What would happen if the eggs were That's a really great question. So what happens if the eggs aren't collected, JP? Do, do the hens continually lay eggs or yes. do they stop? No, they do. They'll keep laying. So it's really important that we, obviously, we want our eggs to be as fresh as possible. So we collect them every day. If we didn't collect them from the chicken sheds, the chickens just keep laying eggs on top of each other. <laughs> so yeah, we make sure we get them out, we get them to, the, to, to here and to the shops as soon as we possibly can. So they're nice and fresh and fantastic product for everyone to Lovely. eat. Lovely, nice work. Great questions. Let's go to Manor Green uh, Primary School now to see if Miss Metcalf's class have any questions for JP. How do you know if you kill it or if it doesn't happen? That's a really great question. So how do you know, JP, when you've got an egg, whether it will turn into a chicken or whether it will stay, a, stay like the egg that you can eat? OK, so the eggs we eat aren't fertile, so we won't get any chicks out of them. So we don't have any cockles in with our chickens, so that all the eggs that we have coming into here, there's no cockles in with the hen, so all of them are unfertile and, and are, are fantastic for eating. Great, that's a really good way of knowing then, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Uh, let's get another question. Let's go back over to uh, Manor Green Primary School. What happens when a chicken can't produce any more eggs? That's a really great question. So what happens, JP, when a chicken can't lay eggs anymore? OK, so when a, ch a chicken's finished laying, it's taken away and made into food for us to eat. Fantastic, great questions, everybody. And we've also got one last question from Russell Scott Primary as well, who are watching and learning with us today. Um, they'd like to know the most interesting part of your job, JP. OK, well, I think, I don't know about the most interesting, but my favourite part is the morning. Getting up in the morning, letting the birds out. I get to go around, make sure all the chickens are happy. And when it's a lovely summer's morning, it couldn't be in a better place. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. Being outside with nature. Exactly. That's love fantastic. It. Love it. Well, we've loved being in here. Thank you so much, JP. I don't no think many problem. people get to take a look at somewhere like this. It's time for our next video now. And this will show you the entire journey of an egg from when it's laid on the farm to when it reaches your local store. Eggs, from the nest to you. On this farm, the hens have special nest boxes inside the hen house. This is where the hens lay their eggs, and these hens lay roughly one egg every day. Once the hen has laid her egg, it rolls gently onto this special conveyor belt, where it's taken to the pack house. At the pack house, every egg is stamped with the farm identification number to see which farm it has come from. You can type these numbers into this website to find out exactly which farm it has come from. They are then packed by hand into large trays and loaded very carefully onto a lorry like this. Next, they are taken to the packing centre. At the packing centre, the eggs are checked for quality by this machine, which can see any tiny cracks on the shell. 
It also spots if there are any eggs which are dirty or misshapen. These eggs are still good to eat, so they are taken away to be used as an ingredient in lots of different foods. Once they have been checked, the eggs are stamped again, this time with a best before date and this symbol, called a British Lion. When you see this mark on an egg, it means that it's fresh and good to eat. It also means that the hen that laid it has been well looked after. Next, the eggs are packed into boxes according to size. Usually they're packed into boxes of 6, 10 or 12 eggs. 12 eggs is sometimes called a dozen. Eggs are then ready to start their journey to your local store. By the time they reach the shop, the eggs will be two to three days old and ready to be boiled in a pan and enjoyed with soldiers for your tea. Welcome back, we hope you enjoyed that. Now we've learned a lot about chickens and the uh, eggs they produce as well, but it's not just chickens that produce eggs, is it, JP? Definitely There's not, lots of other no. birds. And we have some amazing examples here of uh, different birds' eggs and the birds that uh, lay them. Um, and children, I know you've got lots of eggs in your classrooms as well, so this is a great time to, to, to pass them around and take a little look. And can you talk us through some of these, JP? OK, so yeah, like I said earlier, 99.5% of all the eggs in the UK we eat are from chickens. And we've got a chicken here, and again, you can see the chicken eggs. And the, an interesting fact that we, we, we need to talk about is every egg it's marked with a lion, which means it's, it's kept to the best possible you know, conditions. And oh, also, great. on the top of an egg is a, is a code, and that is, uh, every, every farm has its own code. So if you find out what your code is, you can actually look up what farm they, the eggs come from. Wow. So it's traceable you know, to every farm, so that's, that's fantastic. That's amazing. And so what do we have here then, JP? Okay, so then, again, duck eggs. So we eat a lot of duck eggs, and again, they, they're fantastic, really nice to eat, much creamier and richer in flavour. Um, and, and, and again, you can use them in lots and lots of different recipes. Hooray. And am I right in thinking there's a sort of a, uh, a relationship between the colour of the birds and the colour of their eggs? Yeah, they're quite similar. A lot, lot, lot of birds, uh, dappled birds, like the quail, obviously have you know, dappled eggs. White chickens and white birds tend to lay white eggs. Yeah, so it's, you can actually get brown chickens that lay white eggs, so they're, it doesn't always work, but normally that's the case, yeah. They like to fall us sometimes, they, don't they? They do indeed. <laughs> um, so then if we move on up in size, we have our goose. So a goose egg, again, a nice rich egg, very similar to a duck egg, but just bigger. Um, and, and goose eggs, again, if you get the opportunity to eat a goose egg, really, really nice, nice, lovely egg. And then we, quails, so quail eggs. So little quails are sort of like little wild birds. Um, and really nice rich flavour to the egg and the quail eggs you can see they're all mottled and, 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 a, and a lovely sort of weird looking shell and yeah. the idea is that is quails actually live in undergrowth so the mottling is to camouflage the bird camouflage the egg so if the bird leaves the nest nobody can spot where That's the eggs are so clever isn't it, it is, and they're yeah. so cute those little eggs they don't actually look like real when you I look know, closely i know little tiny and when you peel them it's a lot of work just to get a very little egg out of the but, end but, but it it's a flavor oh yeah, lovely brilliant. okay and we have a giant egg here the giant of all eggs and if you see our ostrich behind us i didn't realize quite how tall they were <laughs> 1.7 <laughs> metres to 2 metres. Wow. I wouldn't that like, is if crazy. I had 14,000 of those, now that would be a handful. <laughs> that would be it? hard work. I know, brilliant. And then the egg. Again, a really, this is a really tough egg. I think this would be a bit harder to, to, to break with your spoon for a boiled egg in the morning. Yeah, and this is a real egg, isn't it? It's just been it emptied. Is. But this, is a, this is shell is so thick. It is. So it thick. Is. And it would take half an hour to soft boil that and two hours to a hard boiled egg. 
And how long to eat it? I know. I'd def <laughs> definitely be a sharer, wouldn't it? You couldn't eat you all could, that to yourself. I think that could would you? be a meal, wouldn't it? It really would. <laughs> There's so many shapes and sizes yeah, yeah. And, and different flavours. It's yeah. great. So we've learned so much about um, eggs and, and, and the chickens that, that lay them and all the different birds that lay them as well. Um, I think we should learn a little bit more about how we eat them now, JP, because we do like to eat them in all sorts, of different, all sorts of different ways, don't we? We do. I mean, like I said, my favourite is poached. And, uh, the, we scramble them, we fry them, we know about we eating shell eggs, so we, we always breaking eggs out and eating the whole egg. Yeah. Um, uh, so that's, but we've got to remember as well, they're used in so many other products as well. So cakes and baking and like, we've got a few here, but yeah, so many different ways of using eggs. Lovely, I like an omelette, because I like to put, you know, lots of different things in, so you can have lots of kind of vegetables in there with the egg, which makes, makes, makes it kind of very tasty, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does, and I mean, I love poached. I mean, that is my favorite, because. It, First thing in the morning, I get to go out, check the girls, and then when I come back for breakfast, I get a really nice fresh egg Lovely. and poach it. And I'm gonna challenge all the, all the kids out there to try a poached egg next week. We'll get out there. Yay. Poach your eggs. Brilliant. And children, you have everything you need to make yourself an omelette in your classrooms. You have all the ingredients. So if you'd like to give that a go, best of luck. And make sure, children, if you do give making an omelette a go, you have an adult with you as well, because obviously you have to put it on the gas to, to, to heat the pan up as well. And of course, eggs aren't just tasty foods they're good for you as well they're a good source of protein which is good for your muscles and your bones uh, they're a good source of vitamin a which uh, keeps your eyesight nice and healthy and a good source of vitamin d as well which makes your immune system nice and strong yeah. well we've almost come to the end of this uh, online field trip i'm afraid but just enough time to go over to our schools and find out what you have learned so let's head over to uh, downsbrook middle school to find out what mrs sharp's class have learned one of the things we found out today is that you can tell how fresh an egg is due to how high the white is. Fantastic. So they've learned how fresh an egg is by how high the white is. Yeah, really good fact, really good fact. That's yeah. Pretty. And also, when you drop an egg in water, if it floats, it means it's not very fresh. If it sinks to the bottom, the fresher it is. So the further down it it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, if it floats on the top, it's not as fresh as if it sinks. That's really, really great fact, really good. Let's go to St Anne's Denton Primary School now to find out what you've learned. Last night we had all the cakes tonight. Also, chickens eaten in different places can change the flavour of the eggs. Oh, that's great. So um, what the chicken eats um, changes the uh, flavour of the egg? Yeah, so if they're out on the range you get much sometimes you get much richer yolk and then different coloured yolk as well um, from grass and things like that that they pick up outside and that can change the flavour and obviously the different breeds and different types of egg taste very different lovely jubbly that's a great fact so let's get another fact from um, what you learned from um, Manor Green Primary School now I learned that uh, chickens lay eggs every day that's a great fact that they've learned that they've learned that chickens lay uh, eggs every day JP. Yes, every single day, one every 27 hours. So normally 20 or 30 days and then they'll have a day off. Fantastic, that's great. Uh, you've obviously learned a lot. I think finally before we go, JP, we should just take a little look at some of the other foods that have eggs because we have got lots of um, lovely foods here, haven't we? Some that I didn't realise um, that, that contain eggs. So what do we have? So yeah, so we always think about eggs, you know, the ones you break out and you have your eggs in the morning and you always think about that. But there's loads of other things that have eggs in. And a lot of the eggs that are produced go into making these things. So one of the big things is mayonnaise. So mayonnaise is mostly egg and oil. You know, that's what goes into making it. So we use a lot of eggs in mayonnaise production. And again, very similar with custard, one of my favourites. Mm -hmm. So again, when you're making custard, you've got your eggs and your yolks in there, and then you add the cream and whisk it all up, and that's, you know, Ooh. keep it warm. Lovely, lovely custard. And one of my favourites here... Meringues, yeah. So. Meringues, obviously we take the yolk out and then you're just left with the white of the egg, yep. mix it with sugar um, and then bake it and then lovely sweet meringues. So good. And pasta I never thought, I never realised had eggs in. Yeah, so the, the colour of the yolk colour is what makes pasta yellow. The eggs that we use to make pasta have a really rich dark yolk colour which goes to make the, gives them the yellow taint. Wow, fantastic. And then of course pastry, we wouldn't be able to have our cakes know, and our crumbles and everything that we love. Yeah, where would we be without pastry? And again, I think if you bake, if you're at home and you're baking, I always say if you keep a, a dozen eggs in the fridge, you know, you can make omelettes, you can have a fry up, you can do whatever you like, you can bake something. They're just so versatile. 
fantastic. fantastic. There's always something you can cook it, exactly. isn't there? Thank you so much, JP, and thank you so much, children. We hope you've really enjoyed this field trip all about eggs. I know we've learned a lot today. If you'd like to take part in our next online field trip, you can do that. It's on the 26th of February, which is a Thursday. We're going to be in Northamptonshire learning all about breakfast cereal uh, this time. So uh, pop that in your diary. And don't forget, if you'd like to take part in a farm to fork school field trip, then you can do that. Everything you need to know is on the website and you can have lots of fun just getting your hands dirty and getting stuck right in, just like the children that you can see on the screen right now. It really is lots of fun. But it's goodbye from myself and JP here at the Egg Packing Centre. Have a great day. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you so much, children. Bye. Goodbye, Surrey Square Primary School. Thank you so much for taking part. Goodbye, Downsbrook Middle School. Goodbye, Downsbrook. <laughs> Goodbye, St Anne's Denton Primary. <laughs> and goodbye, Manor Green Primary School. <laughs> and goodbye, Russell Scott School as well. Thank you so much all for taking part. Cheerio.